Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're going to be looking at Diamondback Firearms. So let me give you a little bit of background on this. Um, I was approached by Diamondback Firearms oh, uh, probably before the uh, first of the year. Uh, they wanted me to do a, an armor's manual set for them on uh, their DB10 and their DB15 series rifles. And prior to you know this contract, I had never seen any of the Diamondback Firearms, so uh, I didn't really know anything about them. So due to the fact that I was doing a manual, they sent me one of each of their models of their DB15 so I could show this assembly, reassembly, the different handguards, and so forth. And when I got to into them to take a look, I was actually very surprised. Uh, the quality for what they charge uh, is tremendous. Um, what you have here are different rifles can be used for di different scenarios. And we're going to jump right into this because uh, there's four different rifles that we're going to be going over. The standard, we're going to be going over um, a free float rail, another free float rail, and one 6.5 Grendel, as well as one of their pistols. So we're gonna jump right into this. This, for so I guess a retail of six seventy nine, which is really unbelievable. This is a standard M4. You have a, a forty one forty chrome molly vanadium. You do have an F mark front sight base on here. Now they chose to go with the one and eight uh, twist in these things, which is certainly good. I mean, it will still handle any of your up to seventy seven grain without no problem. Manganese phosphate barrel standard uh, A2 compensator on here, standard M4 uh, handguards. Upper and lower receivers on all these models are all uh, for, uh, forging. Uh, 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. It's uh, the standard mil spec, uh, hard coat anodizing. Now this one here comes with, you see the handguards and a Magpul backup sight. Standard A2 pistol grip. It has the Roger stock on here. The Roger stocks have gotten very popular with a lot of OEMs. And what makes these things popular is when it's disengaged, you have some wiggle in there. So let's say I'm going to get it right here. This is where it's good for me because I got long arms and you start rattling it. Now I lift up around this lever. Now all of a sudden tightens everything right up. So it gives you a much stronger, a much better feeling and no rattling. So it's, it's quite popular with a lot of different uh, companies right now. In fact, I know Colt uses these and American Tactical uses them amongst a few others. Now with all their guns, they have their DB logo on here with the caliber. So a 5.56, you'll see this one here is going to have 6.5 Grendel. Standard mil spec trigger uh, being around uh, 7.5 pounds. So what we have here is, is just a basic M4. Uh, it's, it's a basic M4 that you would be a building block on to add your, your rails, your optics, your backup sights, your furniture. Now this rifle came with a Magpul P-Mag. Now some of these rifles came with C-Products Defense. Um, so depending on what model they are, which, which you'll see, you'll also see uh, C-Products Defense steel magazines uh, we had on one of these rifles. So what you're seeing here is this rifle just being put through a regular old magazine. Um, there wasn't a lot to show due to the fact this is a standard M4. Um, we, I did fire probably around 60 to 60 90 rounds through it, not a single hiccup. For a basic M4, this is really, really a nice rifle, especially for $679. The rifle that we have here is the DB15 CCB. This is very similar to the rifle that we just looked at, the standard one, with the main difference being the handguard itself. Uh, the handguard is a free-floating handguard. This one here is, is basically a, a Milsen 1913 handguard. It's put on with a collet. You have a, a custom barrel nut on here, which has to be aligned with the with a gas tube. Uh, this is a standard carbine lamp gas system. This is also a 16-inch barrel, uh, one and eight-inch twist. Lower receiver is the same, with the exception of the hex mag uh, pistol grip. Now the stock we have on here is an ATI uh, stock. This is a very heavy-duty stock compared to the the Rogers. It does not have the same kind of uh, locking mechanism, but we do have a QD point that's reversible left or right, and we have a little bit extra length on here due to a heavier butt pad. But uh, basically, that's the exact same rifle. The main difference is, is just uh, this particular handguard, the Quad 1913 rail handguard. Now, the optic I have on here is one that I've used quite a bit. In fact, this one's actually about seen its better days. Um, this is the Bushnell. It's a, a 1 to 4. It's placed on with an aluminum aero precision mount. This is a very good optic for the price. You're looking at around $200 for this optic. Uh, however, uh, this one here has served me very well for about, I don't know, maybe four or five years. And now we're starting to have some problems with it. Uh, when you shoot, what's happening now is you're seeing a clear picture, you shoot, then it gets foggy. You shoot again, it gets sharp again, and then it, it becomes foggy again in the next shot. So something's wrong inside with the optics on here. I'm probably going to send this back to uh, Bushnell and have him take a look at it and maybe just reach the end of its service life. Uh, but overall, this has been an excellent optic uh, for standard, you know, under, under 120 yard shooting. Now, shooting this rifle, um, pretty much we shot uh, at uh, 50 yards with it. We didn't go out to 100 yards with it. Um, with the ammunition that we used, um, I used uh, Black Hills Mark 262. I used SIG uh, 69 grain and 77 grain OTM. And the rifle at 50 yards shot, probably around an inch, uh, just, or just a little bit under. Uh, for as far as 100 yards, I don't know what it would do. Uh, that probably would open up a little bit. Uh, this is not what you would call a match-grade barrel. This is a standard military-grade barrel. You know, we have a very reasonable price on this one as well. It's 689 
The, this this handguard will not break the bank. However, you still have the opportunity, if you choose, to replace it with a different type of a handguard if you choose. You do also have the uh, hex mag on here, the, the pistol grip, which again, I like. It's a very good place to start for as far as building your own customized rifle. You're starting off with the, with the most important aspect of any of these rifles, which is a free-floated barrel. Uh, that For any kind of a rifle for accuracy, that is, that is your exact starting point. You could stay with this handguard, or you could replace it to something else. Same thing with the barrel, same thing with the flash suppressor, uh, same thing with the stock, same thing with the trigger. It's fully customizable. The next rifle we have here is the DB15 6.5 Grendel. Now, I have to say I was very, very impressed with the way this one performed. Uh, the ammunition that I had pretty much used with this was the Wolf Steel Case 100 grain Full Metal Jacket, and I did have some warranty. But this one I, went, I did shoot at 100 yards. I wanted to see how it would work. And I was very, very pleased with the Wolf ammunition. It was just a little bit over 1 MOA, which, to be honest with you, is uh, pretty good compared to some of the rifles I've shot in 6.5 Grendel with the Russian ammunition. It was not very impressive. However, with the Hornady ammunition, this was sub-MOA. Uh, it did quite well. Now, the rifle, for as far as this basic setup, is the same as the, as the previous one with the Quad 1913 rail. However, this is a little bit different. First off, we have the Quad rail. This one is M-Lock, as you can see. Now, the way this one is attached, you have a barrel nut that does not have the scalp, so you don't have to time for the installation of the gas tube. So you can get a proper torque on here. You can torque it up to around 60 foot-pounds, which is really an ideal place where you can be when you're uh, torquing down the barrel nut on a standard mil-spec type rifle. You really don't know where you're going to get because you got to go 35 foot-pounds, 35 foot-pounds, 35 foot-pounds, and then see where your alignment is with your gas tube. And if you have to torque down to uh, adjust to get the gas tube to fit, you can you can go up to 80 or even more, uh, up, you know, to 100 foot pounds. It's very very difficult to be able to tell. Traditionally, we have a mill spec that goes you know 35 foot pounds up to 80 foot pounds. Now, we didn't realize actually at Colt until we got a automated machine that actually torqued the barrels down. We didn't realize that for how many years that we were putting these rifles together, or Colt was putting these rifles together, they were exceeding that spec because you were never able to tell. You would put your initial torque on there at 35 foot pounds, and then wherever it landed after you tried to torque it down to get it to align the barrel nut properly for the gas tube. So that was an interesting interesting side note story that, uh, that we had found with it. The barrel is 18 inches on this one. You do also have a very similar type muzzle brake where you do have a flat bottom and you do have your porch on the side and the top. Now I will say this also gives you a hell of a muzzle blast, but the rifle doesn't move. It works very, very well. It's the 4140 uh, chromoly vanadium barrel. This does utilize a mid-length gas system uh, as opposed to the standard carbine. This optic is another one of the Bushnell AR type. This is a 3 to 9 power. Uh, this is also put on with a aero precision aluminum mount. This worked just fine for this rifle for 100 yards. I was very, very happy with it. This is another, one, another optic I've used for quite some time. And for the relatively low cost, it's very, very well made. Uh, I have no complaints about it whatsoever. Now, one of the tricky things about 6.5 Grendels are the magazines. Now, one of the problems that uh, the 6.5 Grendel has uh, is in reliability is due to the magazines. Um, I've tested quite a bit of magazines over the past, and I've had my fair share of difficulties. However, the C Products Defense, which is this one is right here, this is what this rifle comes with, appears to be the best 6.5 Grendel magazine in the market. Um, I've never had any malfunctions with the C Products Defense, where with some of the other ones I have. So I would definitely recommend anybody who's shooting a 6.5 Grendel, go ahead and get the C Products Defense. They're the most reliable ones on the market. So we're going to take this to the range, and we're going to put a few shots through it. Again, the muzzle blast was pretty heavy due to the uh, use of the muzzle brake. However, uh, there was very little recoil. Uh, it kept on target. It was accurate. Even using that uh, lower quality uh, lower quality wolf ammunition, it was, it was excellent. Prices are extremely reasonable on, on the Diamondback rifles. For as far as the 6.5 Grendel, getting one for $865 is a pretty damn good price. You do have a very accurate rifle. However, it's designed for you to customize. It doesn't come with a match grade trigger. It's going to allow you to choose what trigger that you want. For as far as a muzzle device, you'll be able to put whatever muzzle device you want. For as far as a stock, pistol grip. Now, the pistol grip is quite nice. I, I was very fond of the uh, the Hex Mag. It's a, it's a very nice feeling one. Now, another option that you have with the DB15 family of rifles is you have the 6.5 Grendel here. You can have the exact same rifle in 5.56 using the, using the same handguard, uh, which is the same price as the 849. So the, the price of the 5.56 and the 6.5 Grendel are the same. But uh, you have the option of going to either a 5.56, 300 Blackout, or 6.5 Grendel in this model. The next one we're going to look at is a version of their pistol. This is the DB15 B7. Now, this is a 7-inch barrel with what they call the pineapple flash suppressor. 
Now, when you're looking at short barrels like this, you don't do muzzle brakes. You have to do something with, with flash because you get so much unburnt propellant when these things fire that uh, you have to have something on there for flash. I will put the Noveski Flaming Pig on here just because it would direct all that blast forward and it would do a heck of a lot better of a job of, of hiding some of the flash on here. Now, we do have a free-floating handguard. For this one, they went with a 1 and 9 inch twist instead of a, a 1 and 8, which for the short barrel to stabilize that was a really good idea. Now, the upper and lower receiver are the same. They're forged 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. You do have the Magpul Mo pistol grip on here, and we also have an, an ATI uh, pistol brace on here. Now, the pistol brace here, when I shot, was I was up like so. The optic I chose on here is a Trigicon ACOG, and this is the reflex sight, which you have a collimator on the front, which collects light and adjusts the intensity of your, your aiming point in here. This particular one is over 15 years old, and we, we've definitely reached the, uh, the life on it where the, the tritium no longer works. So basically, we have to use this one during the daytime. However, Trichicon does replace the tritium if you so choose. It's not inexpensive, but it does give you the ability to do it. On the front of this particular optic, you have a anti-reflective uh, honeycomb on there, adjustable for uh, elevation and adjustable for windage on the side. This is very compact. Uh, it's very much battle-proof and been used by SOCOM for quite, quite a few years. Now, taking this one to the range, you'll see we definitely have a heck of a muzzle blast. For as far as accuracy, this one was shot at uh, 25 yards, and I probably had a group that was around maybe two inches. Now, I was shooting offhand uh, like so, so for as far as uh, a pistol, I was very, very happy with that for what it was. The pistol versions of these rifles have gotten very, very popular over the last couple of years uh, because it enables you to have a short barrel rifle uh, without having to go through all the NFA work. And there's a lot of different options right now for the stocks that enable you to be able to uh, hold the rifle from your shoulder. For quite some time, there was a big issue with ATF of how you could hold this rifle. If you're holding it as you were supposed to, like so, this was a pistol. But if you were to put it up against your shoulder, now all of a sudden it became an SBR, or short-barreled rifle. So they did change that. There's still some differences in, in the way the stock has to be for it to be legal. But ATF has now said that you can put a pistol stock up against your shoulder, and that is legal. There's a lot of different types that there are. But these are very, very popular. Uh, quite frankly, the 300 Blackout in this is a little bit better because you go with the... Uh, you know, the subsonic ammunition, you get less of a muzzle blast. Um, but with a 5.56, ballistically, when you go to a barrel this short, you lose a lot. You get a lot of unburned propellant. You lose a lot of velocity. So for as far as a defense gun, it's not so it's not so good for as far as its its performance. But if you want something that's very compact that you can that you can have you know for for your home defense or whatever, this is not a bad option. Especially the fact that you have such low velocity with this, uh, you're not going to have to worry so much about it going through. A lot of the materials inside of your, inside of your house, uh, where you would with a longer barrel, higher velocity projectile. My overall impression from the range, these are very inexpensive rifles, but there's nothing compromised for as far as reliability. Uh, all these rifles perform flawlessly. Uh, accuracy on all these rifles, other than the Grendel, was what I would expect out of a standard 5.56 type rifle. Uh, not match grade rifles, but it was uh, up to par with any mil spec type rifle. The Grendel, which is an excellent caliber, it's a very accurate caliber. Worked very, very well. The accuracy was very, very respectable. Again, especially with the Wolf ammunition. Um, I would like to have tried this with some more Hornady ammunition. I was running a little bit low on Hornady ammunition, but uh, the few groups that I did shoot were all sub, -sub MOA with the 123 grain SST uh, rounds that I had. Now, just so you guys know, uh, we're going to be seeing the, the DB10 series as well. The DB10 is their 308 series, which I'm looking forward to looking at, so uh, that's coming up. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.